So, you've either bought yourself a drone after Christmas with the Wonga that you've been given, or, or you got one for Christmas and you've not lost it yet. <laughs> right, so, where do you learn to fly? How do you learn to fly? Where do you begin? Well, first things first, of course, is registering your drone, uh, doing the getting an operator ID, doing the drone model and registration um, module. It's like a CA test, um, Demores. Go and do that. Get your flyer ID. Um, download Nats Drone Assist for checking airspace. Okay, that's probably the most important app along with the one that flies your drone. So first things first, your transmitters, all similar, some have smaller sticks. Okay, top tip, okay, this is not how you fly a drone. Okay, you'd be amazed how many people I meet that do this, stick twanging. Don't do it. Thumb goes on stick. Thumb goes on stick, right, on top, okay. When it's cold like this at the minute, um, in the UK, you should end up, one second, I'll just do this to myself, excruciatingly painful, maybe. You should end up with fingers like that after flying, and your thumbs, okay? Yes, it hurts. Now, you can fly fingers, like that. I am a finger flyer for the most part. However, when I want to do specific moves, and I want to be a bit more precise, finger and thumb. Pinch, it's called flying, pinch flying, okay? So when you pinch flying, your thumb will push the stick and your finger will just hold it back. When it's cold weather like this and you're trying to do nice maneuvers, finger and thumb wins the day, okay? If you want to pan smoothly, it'll be pinch that will win, okay? Every time, okay? So, top tip, okay, don't do this. Fingers on thumbs allow you to fly better. It's true. Right, now, learning to fly, the basic manoeuvres. You've got a drone, okay, and what you want to do is, you just want to go over here, and you want to do call shit and fly and do this. That's not the way, okay? First things first, what you really could do with is one of these, or five of these, should I say, or five of something like this. Okay, doesn't matter which one, but you want five of either of these. Okay, so kids, football cones or soccer cones, if you like, these little markers, these are brilliant. Okay, now you want five. Now, think of this as a top down view. Okay, so we're looking from above. Okay, and what we need is we need five, and we're going to lay them out the following way one in the middle, one up to the right, one to the left. One here and one here. Pace it out. I recommend about 20 meters. So 20 meters, 20 meters. Okay. And then that means that this one is in the middle at 10 meters. Okay. And then you've got 10 up here as well. So it's 10 to there. It's 10 to here. Okay. And you've got 20 meters over here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not looking for perfection. Okay, now remote, as a remote pilot, okay, you're going to stand here. Okay, remember this is a top down view, as so you can looking from above, straight down. Okay, now you always, right, let me be clear on this, always take off with the camera away from you. So with DJI, okay, the reason is, right, so you take off the camera points away from you. And the reason is because when you have a problem or you want to do something and you want to push the aircraft away from you, you're pushing away just forward and up, it means you can push it up and away, okay? If you have it facing you when you take off and you get an emergency or you get a brain moment, if you push it away, guess who it hits? You and anyone stood with you, okay? Never take off with a camera towards you. When I'm doing my GVC flight tests for people, anyone with a camera facing them, I will ask why. You know, oh, it's normal, I do it all the time. It's not safe. Don't do it. Okay? Always away from you. 
And there's a reason why, especially if the compass flips on you, you'll know about it now. So, right, so what we've got then, we've got our five. You've just got your drone, so it's very, very simple. All you've got to do is take off, okay, where you are, and go and fly and hover above the middle one. That's it, okay? Now, the important bit is, if you've got trees and everything here, okay, remember this is a top-down view, what you need to do is get your drone high enough, okay, so you can see it in the blue sky behind, okay? If you can see it in the sky behind, it's easier to see what your aircraft's doing and everything else. If you've got a green uh, background, a lot of vegetation, and your aircraft's in the green stuff, your aircraft's harder to see, so don't do it, okay? It might mean that you can't fly at eye level, so take it up to five meters or whatever you need to, okay? So your height will depend upon your background. You don't have to do this at 400 feet, is what I'm saying, okay? And it's not logical. So, you're starting out. Camera's facing away from you at all times during the flight, so the camera will always be here. What you need to do is learn to drift the aircraft from here to any one of these. There is no particular order. It doesn't matter, okay? So if you can send it to this one, that's great. Put it to this one, great. Can you send it over to here, to this one, from there? Go straight across, okay. Now, after about five minutes of doing that, you're going to be bored. Okay, but we're not done yet, and you can't fly yet, no matter what you think. Okay, what you do, right, is you now rotate your aircraft 90 degrees. Okay, so hovering over the center point now, you'll fly it out nose in, uh, nose away from you, sorry, not nose in, whatever you do. <laughs> so no, and then you'll just rotate yourself 90 degrees, right? So the aircraft's now facing 90 degrees, you're now going to repeat the same things, okay? You're gonna fly here to here, okay? You can fly over to this one, okay? But the camera must always point to the right, okay? In the hover, your aircraft's camera is always pointing that way, okay? This is top down view, remember? Okay, now, you're then gonna turn it. No, I'm not gonna turn it 90 degrees. We're gonna turn it 180. We want you to flip it back the other way. We now need to do it this way, okay? There's a reason why. You'll now do all the same again, drifting about from, from point to point, to circle to circle. You know, you're not using your camera, this is all Mark One eyeball, okay? It's just to get you used to the drifting and seeing your aircraft in the opposite orientation, right? Because if you're used to it like this all the time, as soon as you get sideways, your brain's just going to fart, okay? And that's when you'll have a mishap. Oh, I hit a tree. Yeah, well, if you understand which way your aircraft's facing and how it behaves, it's better. This is why you have to spend time with the basics, okay? The core basics allow you to build onto more better flying skills, okay? So, now, let's say you've learnt all your orientations and you're happy, and you're also bored. I get it, okay, you want to be over here doing the cool shit. Not time yet, I'm afraid. Now, now we're going to learn nose in. Nose in is when the camera faces you. Again, you will take off with a nose, with the camera away from you. This is top down view still. So you'll then come to the centre point. When you get to here, you will then rotate the aircraft so it's now pointing at you. Okay, now, top tip. Okay, the top tip is do this when the wind is blowing over your shoulders. So you want the wind coming this way. Now this is especially true if you're flying in atti mode. If you've got a Phantom 4 like I have, or the old F550 like I have, or racing drones, for example, this is when you want to practice nose in, okay? You want the wind coming over your shoulder, because what it does is if the aircraft sits there in the air, it helps give it lift. This is how you learn to fly nose in model helicopter style. Okay, so model helicopters, they're a pain in the ass to learn. Okay, they're also expensive. You know, um, getting to this kind of stage, you've probably already bent it once with a big model helicopter. Um, so yeah, um, now nose in, you turn it around, it's facing you. 
don't flick it into IT mode yet. If you've got the option, don't do it. Okay, you're flying GPS. Best, and like I say, wind coming over your shoulders, it allows the aircraft to sit better. You're not going to get blown or pushed about as much. You now have to do, with the camera facing you, the same again. You should be able to go to any one of these points. Okay? Doesn't matter which way you go, go to this one first and then go back over to this one and come down to this one and go over to this one. Doesn't matter. Okay? It's about learning what your aircraft looks like, how it behaves. It's about getting instilled into your brain, okay, how your aircraft behaves in certain movements. It's all about muscle memory, okay? And the only way to get the muscle memory is to do it. Okay, it's like, it's like learning to ride a bike. If you fell off at the first instance, right, or you, you missed something out, a shortcut, okay, you're never going to be a good cyclist. Okay, if you don't learn how to like, do a little hop, body hop to get up of the curb, then you're going to get, come off your bike. Okay, if you didn't look at a junction, you end up under a car. Okay, if you always look and do things correctly when riding a bike, should hopefully be able to ride a bike fairly well. When it comes to learning tricks, it's about practicing that trick time and time again. It becomes instilled in your brain, okay? It becomes muscle memory. Playing a piano. If you play the same piece of music, you get really good at it, right? And then you can add bits to it and the further you go. Same with drones. It's about your muscle memory, okay? So you have to do the basics first. You can't go over here, do cool shit, because if you do, you're going to hit something, or end up in water, or the wind's going to blow it away because you didn't read the manual and you didn't do the basics. Now, so nose in, right? We're happy on that. We're all going to drift about, okay? And that that gets you now used to seeing your aircraft in all orientations, which is brilliant, okay? Now, the next thing, we're going to go to the lazy eight. Now, I've heard of people doing the lazy eight the wrong way. It happens. So you're stood here, right? And this is part of some GPC tests. The figure of eight, some people do it as if it's away from you, okay? So this is a top-down view again. Remember, these are 20 meters. You can stretch this out to 30 meters, 40 meters, 50 meters, these cones. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the slightest. You take off. You hover. You come to your center point here. Right. Now... You're going to fly a feet, la the lazy eight. Okay, now the lazy eight, you want to be turning away from people. So imagine you've got vehicles here and you've got stuff over here. The idea is you learn to turn away. Okay, so Cameron will now be facing forwards during the flight. So it doesn't matter which way you go around, but your camera must always face forwards. So starting here, you will go down here, you will turn away. So we're turning away from anything that's here, okay? We will fly up here. Remember the camera is pointing forwards at all times. You will do this at walking speed, no faster. Okay, you will come round the top here. You'll go through the center, over the center cone. You've come down, but now you're gonna turn away. Okay, we come up, we go around, we come across the middle. And that is the lazy eight. Okay, some people will have you do it this way. That's not how a lazy eight is done. It's not done, remember this is a top down view. It's not done as if you're stood here and taking off and flying it that way and it's away from you and all that. That's not how a lazy eight is done, okay? Anyone that tells you it is doesn't know how to do a lazy eight. <laughs> right, so, these cones that you've got by the way are very useful. Not only can I teach you lazy eight, now practice this lazy eight in all directions. So not only should you be able to do it going right, you should be able to do it going left, okay? So you're going this way around, okay? You can do it this way around, okay? You can do that. Practice it, okay? If you've got the space for it and you're not near anymore, practice it. It doesn't matter if you're using racing drones or whatever, okay? Walking speed it is, around you go, okay? Basic flight skills. Now, so that's, that, that's the figure of eight. And you, remember, right, if you've just been practicing well enough, you should be able to go around the lazy eight, 
with the camera pointing backwards. You should be able to fly the aircraft backwards around a lazy eight. Don't ask me to do it because I crap out. I forget where I crap out. I don't normally crap out to about, I think it's here somewhere I crap out on that. I think I've been around a couple of times, but it's not smooth. Not smooth at all. The smoother it is, the better it is. Now, if you've got a Mavic, okay, you've got the Mavic, as you're doing your turns, right, so what happens, a lot of people, they get disorientated. You can get, um, it's almost like a silhouette. As you come around this side, okay, and as you come around, look for the LEDs, okay? The LEDs on the front are your friends. As soon as you can see this one, this is the one you care about on the near side, right? The far side one, because it's the far side, you might not quite see it, but if you see this one, and you know you're traveling forwards, that's enough for you, okay? It's all you need to be able to do, okay? And that's if you're flying a Mavic and you've got the LEDs on. Now, we've done the figure of eight, which, sorry, we've done the lazy eight, we've done all orientations, left, right, nose in, and everything else. You can then go on to learn circuits, okay? And our circuits could be square, or you can put nice turns into them. Okay, put some nice curves in. Do it both ways, okay? Do it both ways, it makes it really good. Practice at different altitudes, including the figure of eight, okay? It does you no harm at all if you practice these things at 80 meters up, okay? Obviously, you can't use the cones so much because the cones are quite low. And, you know, I would suggest doing it around the cones anywhere between 5 and 10 metres high. Um, the wind is an important bit. I fly Phantom 4 Pro, um, so I have the option of ATI mode. If you have the option of ATI mode, okay, just try and get your Phantom 4 Pro just to hover, or Phantom 3, because it's got ATI mode, nose in. All you've got to do is get to sit there, nose in. But do it, like I say, with the wind coming over your shoulders, because it gives you a fighting chance, okay? And that's the important bit. We, you know, you, we all enjoy a fighting chance. Now, can you now go over here, do you think, and fly? No, we're not done yet. Right, so that, that, that was a top-down view, and that's basic manoeuvres, and, you know, there's some, that's great, okay? That'll get your muscle memory. Go out, do that, give you some practice. Yes, it's boring as hell, I assure you. There's nothing worse, right? Then I've, I've got the stride and I want to go over here and do cool shit. You've got to learn the boring shit first. I'm sorry, it's the way it is, you know. Muscle memory. Two plus two is four. We need that. Now, this is a side view now, so now we have a side view. So our little cones that we had, our little cones, right? Now, again, so this is a side view, it's a little bit meh. We're looking side on. But if we've got a cone here, okay, and we've got a cone here, okay? Practice the top hat, okay? A top hat, what's a top hat? So, you're gonna take off again, so you're sort of here taking off. Now, strictly speaking, by the way, you have to do a top hat. You want the wind to be this way. You want to be doing it into wind or away from the wind. Doesn't matter. Into wind's always best. Only do it into wind if you're in netting mode, okay? So we'll take the wind away now. Okay, we'll take the wind away. So, the idea is though, you stand in the middle. I know it's not in the middle, do apologise. You're going to take off. Okay, remember this is now side view. You're going to fly out. You want to be about 10 meters out. Okay, you're going to, well, actually, you've got to come this way because we're going to the wind there. All right, so you're going to take off, you're going to fly around to here. This is your start point. You want to be between four and five meters high. You're going to start moving forwards and walking speed, and you're going to stop here. Okay, you're now going to go up. Five meters and stop. By the way, this is really piss easy with GPS engaged. You're now going to fly across and stop. Okay. You're then going to come down back to level to where you were, best you can. Okay, stop. 
And you have to pause, by the way, at each one of these points for at least five seconds, okay? And then you're going to fly out the other side at walking speed, and that is top hat, okay? Now, if you can do that in ATI mode, okay, that's great, okay? With a model helicopter, you have to be able to do this, stop and wait at each point and descend and come down. And by the way, if you're more than about two meters out on, on any part of this, they will just fail you, <laughs> okay? That's a top hat, that's, that's a good thing to learn, okay? Now, next one. So, next is the 45 degree climb out, okay? So, uh, a 45 degree climb out or descent. So, you stood here, it's a side view again. You're going to take off uh, 45 degrees. Just do that, dead easy. Do it at all orientations. And the reason why you want the 45 degree descent is because it's the fastest way down safely, okay? It is quicker than just pulling down on the stick, okay? So if you've got the low-flying helicopter, okay? You're gonna love my helicopter. Right, it's my little helicopter. Right, if he comes along, right, the idea is the 45 degree descent, you see it, right, you can just come down. And it doesn't matter, you can go away from them, whatever. It's just the quickest way down, okay? And it also means you can't get caught in a vortex. And it used to be a problem, a lot of these UI software now, that's why you're limited on how fast you can descend. Because what happens is, you used to get hot air, um, warm summer's day, it's all rising, you're descending, but all of a sudden there's not enough air density there, and basically you just end up falling. Um, it could be quite unnerving. It used to be a problem with older aircraft and heavier aircraft, but not so much anymore. It's, it's not really a problem anymore, as such, okay? 